Now that we have the idea of how to parameterize a surface, let's look at, at several examples. Um, we'll also plot all of these just so that, uh, so that you can see how to use at least one um, surface graphing tool uh, so that you have that in your back pocket when you're working on your own stuff involving parametric surfaces, for example, homework. Um, <clears throat> okay, so the first kind of surface that we should be able to uh, parameterize is a graph. So if we have a function, then its graph is the surface, uh, a function of x and y, then its graph is the surface z equals f of x, y, right? Um, but this actually comes with its own parameterization. So you can just let x be one of your parameters, u, let y be the other parameter, v, and then the z coordinate has to be f of uh, your x and your uh, and your y, which is u and v. Um, <clears throat> so every graph comes with a comes with its own parameterization like this. In fact, you wouldn't even necessarily need to use different names u and v. You could call the parameters in this case x and y. Um, as we look at different examples, I'll be consistent about using u and v for the names of our parameters. But those are just names. You don't have to use u and v. Um, we'll see examples where you might want to use different names. And this is one. You might want to use x and y for your parameters. Although, depending on what you're doing, this might get confusing because x now means two different things. It means x now is one of your parameters, but it's also one of your coordinates in 3D space. And it's true that the parameter is the same as the coordinate in 3D space, but depending on what you're doing, that might get confusing. Um, OK. so. Uh, for graphs, there are actually two ways to use uh, to use the mathematical software Sage to graph to uh, plot a graph of a function. Um, and one is it actually knows how to graph functions on its own. You can use this command plot 3D, then just type your function as the first input, and then in parentheses tell it x and then the smallest and largest x values that you want and then y and the smallest and largest y values that we want you want notice that these are surrounded in parentheses here okay so let's see how that works um, we're going to start with oh i need to comment this out here we're going to start with this function right here so x squared times y minus x times y squared plus xy and i'll plot it uh, for x values going from minus 2 to 2 and y values going from minus 2 to 2. And we get something like this, some weird swoopy shape that has something to do with x squared times y plus y squared times x and so on. Um, so that's the first way to uh, plot a surface if your surface happens to be a graph. So the second way to do it is, right, most of our surfaces won't be graphs, um, at least not in any obvious way. Uh, the second way is to use a, a function in Sage that is explicitly for calculating, for plotting um, parametric surfaces. So it's parametric plot, and then you need a set of parentheses, sorry, parametric plot 3D, then you need uh, right, a big set of parentheses to surround all your inputs. You need a set of parentheses to around your first three because these are describing um, x, y, and z, so your x, y, and z functions. For the, remember, for the graph parameterization, our x function is just u, our y function is just v, and then our z function is whatever the function is with u and v. And then you have to tell Sage uh, what your parameter is, this, which is u, the smallest and the largest u values, and then what your second parameter is, we're calling it v, and the smallest and largest v values. So if we go go back to Sage and let me comment out this line. And so here we have parametric, parametric plot 3D. Our x coordinate function is just u. Our y coordinate function is just v. And then our z coordinate function is the function that we're plotting. And then some u and v values. I'm going to switch to red for this graph just so that we can tell that uh, that this graph actually is is different. <laughs> Because it'll look the same. We're parameterizing the same surface, but may make it red just so that we know that we're actually looking at our new graph and not the old graph. OK, so you can see that, yes, indeed, this does plot the same surface as we were looking at a second ago. All right, so if you're plotting, if you want to uh, plot a graph, 
use this graph parametrization. Or if you want to work with a parametric surface that is a graph, you can use this graph parametrization. All right, another common source of, uh, of parametric surfaces is to use surfaces that are actually just parts of your coordinate system. Um, so what I mean by part of your coordinate system is, right, in, for example, in uh, three space, right, our coordinates, our Cartesian coordinates are x, y, z, you might just set one of those coordinates to be a constant like this, say y equals one. So this gives you a surface because now you have two variables and they're acting like parameters. And if you plotted this, you'd get some surface. Um, for Cartesian coordinates, all of these surfaces are planes, and those are boring, so let's, let's not worry about those. Um, but if you use cylindrical or uh, spherical coordinates, you get more interesting surfaces. So for example, let's parameterize the sides of a cylinder with radius r. Well, cylinders are nice in cylindrical coordinates. Right? In cylindrical coordinates, uh, a cylinder is just a surface with constant r, right? So we're going to let our r value be capital R, um, and variable theta and z, right? So what we can do is just write down the formulas, the coordinates for cylindrical coordinates, except plug in our particular r, our particular uh, radius for the variable r. So let's use let's use a radius of I don't know four for now. So uh, for the x coordinate for cylindrical coordinates, that's r times cosine theta. So our our r value is four, four times cosine theta, and our y coordinate function is um, r times sine theta. So four times sine theta, and the z is just z. OK, so you can see when we do this, we get three coordinate functions. And we have two independent variables, theta and z. And so this is a parametric surface. So let's plot this parametric surface. Should be a cylinder, or the sides of a cylinder. Um, so that's this one right here. Notice that I've actually, uh, instead of using theta and z, I've switched to u's and v's. Um, you can use any name that you want as long as you remember to change the names over here. And also, you have to tell Sage that the name you're using is a variable, a mathematical variable, and not a uh, not a Sage variable. And that's what this stuff up at the top is doing. Anyway, plot that, and we get, yes, we do indeed get a cylinder. No big surprise. OK. Um, we could do we could play this game with spherical coordinates as well. So um, we could parameterize a cone with opening angle pi over three. By opening angle pi over three, what I mean is this angle up here is pi over three. Um, right? A cone. Well, a cone comes from constant a constant phi value. So we just need to choose the appropriate phi value so that this angle this opening angle is pi over three. Um, but this opening angle is just twice the phi value that makes this cone. So this cone is actually just phi equals pi over 6. OK. So uh, we can use we can write down spherical coordinates, except wherever we see phi, we'll actually just plug in the angle pi over 6. So this one I, I won't write out. I assume you remember spherical coordinates. But let's look at the plot. Right here, okay. So the x-coordinate function is um, so u is playing the role of rho, so rho cosine v is playing the role of theta, so u cosine theta, uh, rho cosine theta times sine of right. This is where phi would show up, but we're putting in our particular phi value, and then there's the y-coordinate function where this first cosine is switched to a sine, and there's our z-coordinate function where we're using cosine of our phi value, which is pi over 6. Um, to get a cone, we should let our the variable standing in for theta, which is v, go from 0 to 2 pi. So that's why I have from 0 to 2 pi. And then u should go from, well, I don't know, 0 to up to something. I chose 3 kind of arbitrarily. 
and yes, we get a cone. Uh, it's hard to know if the opening angle for this is exactly pi over 3. If we look at it from the side, it kind of looks like pi over 3 is, is plausible, but anyway. Okay, um, another way to get, another nice way to get surfaces is what's called a ruled surface. So um, to get a ruled surface, we'll have, we'll take some curve winding its way through space, and then also for every t value along the curve, we will have a direction given by another vector valued function. So how you should picture this, uh, this direction function b is that uh, imagine the vector that it produces starting from a of t. So what b is doing is it's associating a little di a direction for every, uh, for every point on the curve, like this. Okay? And then we could make a surface by just imagining the line through every point on the curve going in the direction given by the vector. So right, that means this line, and this line, and this line, and so on. As long as, um, uh, as, long as this direction function is continuous, and I guess also the curve should be continuous. As long as they're both continuous, this will create a surface that uh, it's made up of lines, and it also is, uh, it's not broken, right? If the curve A or the direction function B can be discontinuous, then that can create breaks in your surface, which isn't usually something we, we want. Uh, so for an example, let's, uh, Let's look at the helicoid, which is a, a, it's called a helicoid for a good reason, right? It does have to do with the helix, which we'll see in a second. But it's a, a ruled surface that we can get by, uh, for our curve, just taking 0, 0, t. So this is a curve that just goes up in the z direction. And for our direction function, b of t, uh, we're going to take cosine t, sine t, 0. So what this, right, what this does is it just goes around in a circle. Right, so as we go up, the direction that we're going to go goes around in a circle. So our first, right, at the bottom, it's going to be horizontal like this. When we go up a little bit, our direction will have rotated. So we'll get this, and so on. So just imagine as, this, as we drag this line upwards, uh, it, it rotates. Okay? So before we plot this, let's actually work out uh, how to... Uh, how to put this all together. Um, so in general, right, if we start with a of t, right, how could we parameterize the line through a of t in the direction of b of t? Well, to parameterize a line, you just need a starting point and a direction, which is what we have. So when you have a starting point and a direction, the line is your starting point plus a new parameter, which I guess maybe we'll call v, times the direction, which is b of t. Okay, so for a ruled surface, this is your parameterization. You might want to use u instead of t just for consistency, or maybe don't. I don't know. Either way. Um, but to get a ruled surface, right, you have your, your uh, curve plus new parameter times your direction function. Okay, so for the helicoid, that means we're going to have 0, 0, t. I'm going to switch to u just so that we're using u and v, uh, plus v times our direction function, which is cosine u comma sine u comma 0. And then when we uh, do all the vector arithmetic here, we get v cosine u comma v sine u comma u. So this is our helicoid. Um, let's think about what uh, what parameter values would make sense. So we're going to want this circle to, to go at least once around. So u should go from 0 up to at least 2 pi. But I don't know, maybe we should go up to 4 pi or 6 pi or something, just so we get more than one trip around. For v, right? for any given direction here, positive v values are going to go out in one direction and negative v values are going to go out in the other direction. So we should pick up some negative and positive v values. I don't know, maybe uh, 
just so the picture looks nice, maybe we should have V be on the same order as uh, as U. So, because we're going to go from zero to four pi in the U direction, so maybe we should do something similar in the V direction. Uh, four pi is twelve-ish, so maybe minus six up to six. Okay, so let's plot this mess. Uh, okay, comment that one out. So for our helicoid, right here are the coordinate functions that we had, and uh, I'm going to go from 0 to 4 pi in the u direction, and in the v direction, minus 6 to 6. And we get, we get this. Right? This sort of screw kind of shape. Right? Um, one thing that uh, is can, one thing that can be hard to do with parametric surfaces is to really like understand why the formulas that you type in produce the shape that you actually get. And there is a, a kind of nice way to do this, which is, um, so my hint here is to visualize a curve with constant v and with u varying, and then imagine what changing v would do to the curve. So let's do that for this particular example. If we fixed v to a particular value, say 2, this would turn into 2 cosine u, comma, 2 sine u, comma, u. Okay, what is this? Well, this is a helix, right? This is going straight up in the z direction, but in the x and y direction, it's going around a circle of radius 2. So this is a helix with radius 2. All right, so now let's imagine what happens when we change this value too. Well, that's just going to change the radius of the helix, right? So if we increase that, we're just going to get a helix that's a little bit bigger, like this. And if we made it smaller, we'd get a helix that's a little bit smaller. So we get these sort of nested helixes, or nested helices, right? And if you look at the graph that we got, that's exactly what this is. This is sort of infinitely many helixes with different radii all sort of sitting right next to each other, right? So that's a good way to understand what, uh, why a particular surface looks like what it looks like. In fact, um, you can even imagine a coordinate grid sitting on, uh, sitting on this surface. Uh, the, uh, what we just saw is that the u direction goes up a helix, so the u coordinate grid will be helices going up, and the v, since v takes us uh, along a line, the v coordinate grids will be sort of going in straight lines. I think we can actually ask for Sage to plot that. I think it's, uh, oh, I should have looked this up. Is that what is it? Grid, maybe? I'm not going to remember what the option is. No, not grid. Mesh? Yes, mesh. OK, so now you can see these helices, which we get by changing u. You can see these helices winding their way up this thing. And you can also see all of the lines that are part of the ruled surface. So here's a line. There's a line, there's a line, right? Okay, so very nice picture. I've always liked the helicoid.